how long do I take this stuff? The answer is it depends on uh, on your own biochemistry. It depends on your own subjective experience. There, I think we are starting to, to see tests come out that can help people really quantify this and analyze this. Uh, but until then, trial and error is a great place to start. The untapped human potential is just, it's ridiculous. Our, our untapped potential is so, there's so much to work with there. And we have developed so fast technologically, yet our spirituality and our consciousness uh, optimization has fallen behind. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevation Recovery Podcast, your hub for addiction recovery strategies, hosted by Chris Scott and Matt Finch. Greetings and welcome to episode 233 of the show. My name is Matt Finch and I'm joined with my good friend and co-host Chris Scott, my sidekick Papaya the Green Cheek Conyers. I am drinking uh, Gerald Steiner, if that's how to pronounce it, sparkling natural mineral water, which you turned me on to, Chris, natural mineral water, high mineral content, and this is from Germany, and it's, I find that not only is it naturally carbonated, it's got one container has, what, 80 milligrams of magnesium, let's see, 260 milligrams of calcium, and some other minerals in there as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you've had that pops pop rocks candy. There's a type of candy called pop rocks. You open up the packet, dump it in your mouth, and it kind of like pops and fizzles. This is kind of a similar version to that. So number one, I love the taste of it. Number two, I love the health benefits of it. I drink it at night a lot, sometimes in the day. They sell it right down the street. I don't make any money from recommending this. Um, <laughs> just like we always do, Chris. When we're trying new products, whether they're supplements or German waters or CBD drinks, or even the clothing that we wear, like these cool shirts from Old Navy. And now I think you're probably wearing a high leech shirt. And so it's fun for me to share this type of stuff with our audience because, you know, it's just, I love it when people tell me about great stuff. And you and I have learned a bunch of these things from each other. So everything you learn about, I get to benefit from and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. This is a high lead shirt. I'm jealous of your, I always said Gerald Steiner, maybe it's Gerald Steiner, but they're flying off shelves. I guess maybe because we've mentioned it before. Uh, every time I go to Whole Foods, it's like there's two left and I, I would buy eight of them if I could. I've got my lemon LaCroix here and also my Dragon Herbs spring tea, spring dragon tea, which is my go-to. I either have that or green tea when I do a podcast. And I, I mean, I'd probably drink two or three cups of that every single day. I just don't feel totally optimized without it. And lately I've been, I actually had an appointment this morning with my functional medicine doctor to go over blood work. I get blood work done every couple months just to keep track of things and see what's going on. And I, I feel like she, it's bittersweet when I come in for her because we have a great time talking, but I always make her late for her next um, patient. So, you know, we're talking about everything and anything, and she wants to know how the fit recovery people are doing and how the podcast is going. Uh, but one of the things that was really interesting about this morning, besides me trying to sell her on uh, adaptogenic tea that I also have no financial interest in, I just love it, uh, was the fact that, so I started doing this in 2019, going to a functional medicine doctor and my liver enzymes have been getting steadily better since 2019. They weren't scary elevated, but they were still elevated. And the only thing I can conclude is that because even in 2019, I was still, what, five years off of alcohol. I have to conclude that it's just like continuing diet changes, optimization. Uh, at some point, I realized that uh, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which is at risk of being banned, could be... Uh, you know, that it was really useful for me and that it gave me some energy and that if I ever have a period where I feel sluggish, it helps me sleep better. I breathe easier and I have a little more energy. And it's also really powerful for liver detoxification. So I'm wondering if maybe I didn't do uh, enough liver uh, detox when I quit drinking years ago. And I mean, obviously I'd eat a lot of meat um, and I work out a lot and I don't, I wouldn't say I have a low stress life. I have a type A personality and I tend to take on a lot of projects. So those things can contribute 
to higher liver enzymes. And we're not, again, even in 2019, it wasn't like, you know, alcoholic type liver enzymes. My liver enzymes were off the chart when I quit drinking. I definitely had fatty liver. I may have had alcoholic steatosis. Uh, I, I guess I didn't have cirrhosis, but we didn't do a biopsy or find out or, you know, try to do some ultrasound. I was just kind of hoping that I didn't. But, you know, given the amount I was drinking, it wouldn't have been necessarily surprising. I was up to a handle of hard liquor a day by the time I quit. And I'd been drinking for over a decade, even at a relatively young age. But I found it very interesting that the continued optimization I'm doing is still over time decreasing my uh, liver enzymes. And I do feel better uh, over time. And part of that supplementation, part of it is really good workouts I get with my MMA coach, who's a retired UFC fighter. And, you know, I've been shifting from really heavy weights, which I did from about 2014 when I quit drinking until uh, about three years ago when I started doing the MMA stuff. I was doing a lot of uh, deadlifts and I still do deadlifts once a week. I used to do deadlifts like three times a week, like pyramid sets. You know, I remember that. Like just nothing but deadlifts for like an hour plus. And I got great results from, from that, from a strength perspective, but I've kind of mixed things up. I think I probably reduced stress a little bit. Uh, even though my MMA workouts are still growing, I'm, I'm not quite as hard on myself as I used to be. I'm, I've calmed down a little bit. I think you can probably say the same for you. And so anyway, there's a, a number of factors. I don't know how to disaggregate them accurately, but I'm still experiencing benefits of optimization, even now, seven plus years after I uh, transcended alcohol. And I found that interesting. You know, so of course, we also, we check things like inflammatory markers, cholesterol, uh, and everything. But I found that that was kind of the takeaway today. Uh, and I don't know, Matt, did you ever get your liver enzymes checked? It was that something that you noticed when you uh, quit drinking? I actually have never had my liver enzymes checked in my entire life, but, you know, my parents are both really popular, you know, master herbalists. And my mom would tell me so often wh whether I was living with them at the time or whether I was on my own, uh, I would tell her about these symptoms I was having. For example, uh, like the bottom of my foot would be cramped and hurting, or my face would be kind of puffy and swollen. Or over here in my lower back kind of side area would be aching. I would have acne. I would be, you know, I'd have like mood swings and irritation and proneness to anger and, and a lot of other symptoms. And it was funny, almost all the time, my mom would correlate those symptoms with your liver is she, she wouldn't say the word fucked, but in, in different words, that was basically what she was saying was you're binging on alcohol. You're taking all sorts of other drugs. You're eating tons of sugar, junk food, fast food, you know, burgers, burritos, sandwiches. Back then I had a soda with almost every meal too. And so I know I had serious liver problems big time. And, but yeah, I've never had them tested. Uh, what I've found is that a lot of herbs, NAC, first of all, and I'm almost kind of like a little bit hesitant to speak about it, but I don't care. We'll speak about it. Just because some of the things that you and I have talked about on here, I remember one time when I went to order that Spring Dragon Longevity tea, there was they weren't in stock, and I had clients that were trying to order, and they were emailing me, it's not in stock. I was like, oh my goodness, people are buying this stuff up all of a sudden, and so I hope that doesn't happen with NAC, but you know what? We're not greedy, so we'll share these resources with everyone because people you know, trying to overcome alcohol or drug addiction or both. They need these things more than we do. So NAC has been all those benefits that you recommend or that you mentioned, you know, more energy, clear headedness, you know, it helps you get out of fatigue, liver reduces liver toxic burden. I get all that stuff too. But uh, one of the things is really good skin benefits, uh, really good mood benefits. In fact, that's really the biggest reason I take, and I take 1200 milligrams Every morning and usually every evening too, about 45 minutes before eating, it's like the best way to not only boost glutathione, well, not the best way, but yeah, the best way that I've taken, and I've never taken glutathione injections or infusions, which I'd expect would be better. 
but the real the real reason I use NAC primarily is my mood. Remember, I used to have generalized anxiety and really bad social anxiety. My generalized anxiety would be from mild to moderate most of the time, from even when I was a little kid. Even as a little kid, I was anxious. Social anxiety was from moderate to severe to so bad I couldn't go into a lot of stores. I was afraid to go to certain grocery stores and places to eat. Oh, social anxiety is so weird. So, of course, I do a lot of things nowadays for my mood health and physical health. But NAC is, I think, one of the main things that I use to where my mood, I don't get anxious anymore. I cannot remember the last time I got anxious. It's been so long. I can't remember the last time I got depressed. I can't even remember the last time I was socially anxious in a social setting. You know, my dad, regarding the liver stuff too, <laughs> my dad makes this product called uh, Nerve Aid. So again, they're, for people that know about my parents, they've been on here several times. Uh, I think their website is selfhealschool.com. And my dad makes a bunch of herbal products. <clears throat> One of them is called Nerve Aid. The funny thing is, is most of the Nerve Aid that he makes, he drinks himself. And so it's hardly ever for sale. I remember a bunch of my friends back in the day were trying to quit drinking. They're like, Matt, can I get some of your dad's Nerve Aid that you let me try? And it was so hard to get these people trying to quit alcohol, a bottle of my dad's Nerve Aid, because he's like, oh, I got to make some more. And then I had to check in with him in like a week, be like, what's up with that Nerve Aid? He's like, oh, uh, I only have enough for myself. And so what, what's in it is it has, uh, I think, not Corbell brandy. I think that's what he used to do. Uh, he used to use Corbell brandy. It's, it's some gnarly type of high potency alcohol, hard liquor to the extreme that he uses to extract these sedative herbs. I think there's like passion flower, valerian root, skullcap, perhaps, uh, let's see, maybe lemon balm. I forget the main ones are passion flower and valerian, and there's other nerving sedative herbs. And he also puts a, a hefty dosage of milk thistle in there as well. In fact, he teaches his herb students in their classes how to, it's like harm reduction, how to go out if they're going to party and go drinking, how to not quite mega dose milk thistle, but moderately dose it before you go drinking and that the main alkaloid in there is silymarin, and that kind of protects your liver from the toxic effects of alcohol to where if you do it the correct way, my dad says, I don't think I believe this, at least to the extent that he talks about it, you don't get a hangover or you get much less hangover symptoms. So I'm not recommending people go do that. I'm not recommending go take a bunch of milk thistle before you drink. But that's a really good, you know, and you've written about this, Chris, I know on the Fit Recovery website, because I read uh, one of those articles. I think it's even in your course, Total Alcohol Recovery 2.0. Uh, you did a fantastic article on liver, something like liver repair after quitting drinking. And, you know, if you were to go back and rewrite that, I'm sure nowadays you probably add NAC to it. NAC, milk thistle, turmeric powder, especially turmeric powder combined with bioprene, which is like a kind of not brand name, but kind of blend name for black pepper or black pepper extract, which I forget the amount, but I believe it boosts the efficacy and the absorption of the turmeric powder by 2000%, something like that. I could be off, but yeah, liver and my mom's just so big into this. Chinese medicine's big into this. Most American adults have either a mild, moderate, or severely toxic liver, uh, liver burden, toxic liver burden, all these different ed like edible food-like substances, box foods, packaged foods, eating out, alcohol, cigarettes, too much caffeine, stress, all these things put so much pressure and burden on our livers. Gosh, and that's one of the things when people do liver cleanses, you know, a bunch of fresh fruits and vegetables and lots of lemon water and liver cleansing herbs and maybe some colon cleansing stuff in there too. You know, one or a one or two week liver cleanse, people have more energy. They get better sleep. Their skin's better. They're in a much better mood. They're having healthy 
bowel movements and elimination more. Um, so yeah, the liver, most Americans, and I'd expect uh, most kind of developed countries like we're in, uh, where people are just, you know, we're so far away from living like our ancestors did, walking barefoot <clears throat> with no shoes on the surface of the earth, being su surrounded by nature, drinking nothing but fresh water from the springs, and, you know, just everything was fresh, the, the, the no pollution in the environment from, you know, all these uh, power plants, bombs that have been, you know, uh, 80 years ago, atomic bombs that have been dropped, uh, nuclear reactors, spills and everything. It's so much toxic shit that even if people are, you know, on a healthy diet, just all the stuff in our air and in the atmosphere from all those, you know, the modern man just basically destroying mother earth. So I think liver repair, no matter what someone's recovering from physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual liver repairs, it's a great one to optimize. It's so important. Right. Yeah. And I'd add a few things to that. I actually have been taking turmeric for the last couple of years, <clears throat> maybe the last year and a half. I haven't, uh, I haven't always taken it. I originally started taking it to reduce inflammation in my joints for MMA, you know, boxing and white tie and that kind of stuff getting slammed on the, on the ground. So I would take that and tart cherry, which is also really good for the joints and for reducing inflammation, some very powerful antioxidants. You can drink the tart cherry juice, or you can uh, take it in capsule form. And I also like to drink, well, actually I should say, as far as the turmeric, I take BCM 95, which is supposed to be as well absorbed, if not better as the uh, bioprene or the black pepper. I'm not sure which is better. I know that there's, you know, both uh, people use both because uh, turmeric on its own, you can eat a lot of turmeric and it's good for you, but you don't uh, absorb as much curcumin, which is the active compound there. I like to drink organic, unsweetened, pure lemon juice. I do that when I go on vacation, because sometimes when I go on vacation, even if I've been there before and I've stayed at the hotel that I was at in San Diego a number of times, for some reason, it's like my whole digestive system just stops. And I feel like, and, and I feel like my detoxification system stop. And I don't know if it's because I've been sitting on a plane for a while or what, but a little bit of the Gerl Steiner, if I can find it, mixed with the organic lemon juice is it's perfect. It's not sweet. I guess someone could add stevia <clears> or monk fruit if they wanted to, or some honey, but I just, I kind of embrace the sour the same way I like to embrace the bitter uh, things with bitter tastes are supposed to be good for the liver. So if you can find a non-alcoholic bitters, then that would be something that might help to uh, kind of spark the production of, of gastric juices or bile. Uh, and you know, while we're on this topic of, of liver, artichokes are supposed to be good for the liver as well. There's some evidence there. I guess that that's another thistle type of plant, thistly type of plant. Uh, I recall reading somewhere that, that thistly types of plants, and I know that's an extremely unscientific term, but they tend for whatever reason to be good uh, for the liver. So I found that to be interesting. Milk thistle and artichoke. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are some others, but I've forgotten them. Uh, and, and I should say I'm not an expert in medicinal herbs or even medicinal foods. You and I are we're both generalists, but we have done a lot of research on this kind of stuff for ourselves. And I wouldn't be surprised if the combination of all of this stuff has been helping me continue to optimize over time. My sense of well-being still improves you know, seven years after, uh, after transcending alcohol. And I haven't necessarily been perfect to myself either. I've had periods of sleep deprivation. I've had periods of, of you know, adding too much stress. I've had periods of probable overtraining, although it's been a while since I've actually overtrained. I've had periods of eating crappy food. You know, it's like a tradition now. Every time I land in California, I go to In-N-Out. I, I mean, it's not even something I plan. It just happens. I get so excited that I see In-N-Out, which is one of like two fast food chains that I actually can eat without without uh, having to run to the bathroom afterwards or feeling sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. and it's that and Chick-fil-A. I can do Chick-fil-A maybe three times a year and I can do in and out whenever I land in California. And I usually get in and out one more time before I leave if I'm on like a week long trip. So yeah, I haven't been always perfect. And I'm sure I've put stress on my liver. Alcohol is not the only thing that's bad for the liver. Although it's probably one of the worst things for the liver. And it's a good thing to 
keep up the optimization. People are always asking, how long do I take the supplements for alcohol recovery? <laughs> I mean, and it's a valid question because I was concerned as well when I stumbled across the first resource that I could find on that topic, which was Joan Matthews Larson's Seven Weeks to Sobriety, which is a masterpiece. I mean, at this point, there are some parts in it that could be updated with some newer supplements and things that we know and maybe some lifestyle strategies uh, and I have my own opinion about whether or not alcohol addiction is a permanent, you know, long-term biochemical disorder. Um, I do think it is a biochemical disorder and a severe one for people who are actively addicted. But anyway, fantastic book. And you know, she recommends you do this for a set period of time, often three months for, for most people. Uh, and, and she uses megadoses for people. So there were certain things that I took for say a year, and then I stopped like DLPA was one of those things, DL phenylalanine, uh, an amino acid that helps to boost naturally your endorphins and dopamine. And I took one capsule of that every day for a year. I'm sure some people are sick of me uh, saying that because I've said it before in lots of videos, but I bring that up because I didn't have to take everything else at, 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 as a mega dose uh, every day. I didn't have to take all the amino acids like 5-HTP I took for two to four weeks, probably around three weeks. And after that, I started, rather than it making me calm and sleepy, it actually made me agitated. So the interesting thing there, serotonin in excess, causing similar symptoms as a serotonin deficiency. And because I'd done my research, I knew that. So I was like, all right, time to stop taking 5-HTP. But you know, six months down the road, I decided to stop taking DLPA and I felt a little bit sluggish. I didn't feel bad but I didn't feel totally optimal, started taking it again, felt great. A year later, after I started taking it, I experimented with stopping it and I didn't feel any difference when I stopped it. So I took that to mean that my endorphins and dopamine had been boosted. And of course, that wasn't the only thing I took for those neurochemicals. I took mecunipurians at times. I took L-tyrosine for a while. Eventually I stopped the L-tyrosine because it was making me uh, a bit Jit, well, jittery is not the word, overstimulated would be the word. And I didn't get that effect from DLPA, probably because it's a combination of two amino acids and the LPA uh, was in a lower dosage than the L-tyrosine had been. But that's the kind of, I'm tr trying to walk through the thought processes that I had that can ho hopefully help people answer the question of how long do I take this stuff? The answer is it depends on uh, on your own biochemistry. It depends on your own subjective experience. There, I think we are starting to, to see tests come out that can help people really quantify this and analyze this. Uh, but until then, trial and error is a great place to start. And you know, some people do start immediately with uh, tests or they might get Julia Ross's program or Chris Angan's program and they can fill out questionnaires and they can start mega dosing. There's always going to be a little bit of trial and error, but I'd say for a lot of people just starting out, Infuse yourself with nutrients. These are very benign compounds for the most part. And when they're not, you'll know, you know why it's contraindicated. For example, serotonin precursor amino acids and SSRIs are contraindicated. And, and that's just one example. There are, there are some others. Uh, but most people can benefit greatly from just starting this adventure. I say that because the word journey is so cliched. Uh, you start this adventure, you start infusing yourself with nutrients, and then down the line, you figure like, oh, you know, I've, I've been stressed. It's been a while since I took uh, 300 milligrams of magnesium because I think I repaired that deficiency, but maybe I can take it for sleep when I feel like I'm stressed out and then it works. And so you end up with all of these tools that help you for the rest of your life. And here I am, I'm seven years transcended from alcohol. And yet I bet 20 or hopefully 30 or 40 years from now, I'll still know the, the same compounds and hopefully even more that can help me fine tune. A lot of good stuff in there. Uh, I'll, I'll try and remember the points I wanted to pick up on. One of them for sure was the, you know, unsweetened fresh lemon juice, right? Or the, you, I think you buy it in concentrates, right? Un, uh, it's at Whole Foods in a bottle most of the time, although not just Whole Foods. I think they actually sold the same brand at CVS. But yeah, it's just a good, yeah. I don't know if it's from Concentrate. I think it's just fresh squeezed. It's uh, in a glass bottle. Oh, and okay. Gotcha. Juice. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking one of those plastic lemon, organic lemon juice from Concentrate, 
well, yeah, that's much more convenient than what I do. And I go on phases of it. Uh, right now I have three big old juicy giant organic Myers, uh, Myers lemons. You ever had those? They're super juicy. They have so much lemon juice. My parents actually grow them. Sorry to interrupt oh, you. But the funny oh, thing is they gave them to me and I thought they were oranges. Mm -hmm. uh, so I opened, I peeled one and started eating it. And it was only then that I realized it was a lemon. Oh. But I mean, when you're, when you're expecting a lemon, it's fine. When you're expecting an orange, it's different. But I did turn that into lemonade. Actually, I took some monk fruit crystals that I had and formed a simple syrup and mixed it with the fresh squeezed Meyer lemon, lemon juice. It was amazing. Papaya just, this is the first time ever. Papaya just sneezed on me. Now she sneezed on my shoulder many times before over the five years or whatever I've had her. But I, that's the first time just now that I actually felt the sneeze on my neck right here. I hope you're not getting sick. Willow has a little bit of a minor cold and she's at her grandparents' house and my sister has a minor cold, but yeah, speaking of the lemon juice, such a liver detoxifier. Uh, one of the times I went and saw an acupuncturist, uh, I know that I was fatigued back then. This is probably five or six years ago and I was feeling fatigued and I was, I think that was the main thing was I just felt, I felt depleted. You know how, like when your body's just running on empty, you're just like, gosh, I don't have any juice in my batteries. And so I needed something more than just what I was doing. So I think it was like a Grubhub coupon or yeah, I got a Grubhub coupon for a gift for either my birthday or, or Christmas, I think it was. And so out of the things I could choose from, one of them was a free acupuncture appointment. I think it was maybe even like an hour long. Maybe it wasn't free. Maybe it was like a really reduced price. And so their goal with those things is to get you in to have their service and then at a reduced price or free, and then you hopefully like it and we'll sign up. So I didn't sign up for anything extra, but uh, the acupuncturist, she was like, oh yeah, your liver is messed up. And that's the main, it was the main thing back then. So she told me, uh, do you drink water with fresh squeezed lemon juice in there? Some lemon juice. I was like, I've done that a bunch in the past right now. I haven't been doing it for a while. So that was one of the things she wanted me to put on my treatment plan. Uh, another thing she recommended more acupuncture visits, but I didn't really like the facility too much. Plus my mom's one of her best friends is an acupuncturist. I'd rather go to her. They also gave me this kind of foot bath thing. I really wish I could remember the name of uh, the treatment, that type of therapy. Uh, I forget what it was, but you stick both your feet in this, you know, it looks like a little foot bath. And I don't, I don't remember what they put in there, but it's a certain time you go in there and there might've even been like some type of machine stuff hooked into it, where it was like in few, maybe electromagnetic treatment. Anyways, long story short, depending on like what color the water turns afterwards, it gives you kind of a subjective uh, readout really on how optimized your health is in that regards. I wish I could remember more. Uh, other things you were saying too, micronutrients, number one, you know, lots of water, then also micronutrients. I get that question a lot too. How long am I going to have to take all these supplements for? You know, not everyone asks me that, but it's pretty common. And I'm, and my whole thing is it's, it's so different for everyone. I've known people that didn't take any supplements and they recovered just fine. Typically it was people that, you know, ate a really good organic diet, got a lot of sunshine. Uh, I remember this one person, he was actually a vegan. He quit alcohol, maybe in his forties, he was a vegan, but he ate really healthy for a vegan. He did a lot of outside gardening. He did a whole bunch of yoga lots of sunlight, meditation. He didn't have a lot of stress uh, overall in his life after he quit drinking. And so he never used a supplement. I also had met this guy many years ago now at a kind of local San Diego County outpatient treatment program. And he, I think he's probably in his fifties, maybe mid fifties. And anyways, he was the founder and the treatment coordinator, you know, the clinical director and when I went and talked to him, uh, my friend, my friend found him on LinkedIn and she was like, Hey Matt, I think you and this guy could help each other out. And so I was like, all right, I'll check it out. 
So the guy messages me from LinkedIn. He's like, Hey, you know, we can help each other out. Let's, let's, let's meet, come up to my facility and we can see, you know, see what we got in common. Maybe I can help you. Maybe you can help me. So he actually laughed at me, Chris, when I told him that I taught people, you know, in one of the things I teach, how to use supplements for substance detox, post-acute withdrawal, and then maintaining recovery. And he was like, what? He kind of like thought I was joking at first or kind of laughable. And he's like, tell me, Matt, do you really think people need supplements to overcome addiction? Something along those lines. I was like, I don't think they need it, but I certainly think for the vast majority of people, when done right, it can be the missing link. And he's like, because I'll tell you, I've been off of alcohol for like, I don't know, 30 years, 35 years, and I've never taken a multivitamin even. Funny thing was, he was overweight. He had really bad ADHD. He would cut me off a bunch. He wasn't listening a lot of the time when I was talking. He was super arrogant and narcissistic. (laughs) So it was kind of funny that he was like, oh, I I haven't even taken a multivitamin. I'm all thinking he'd be great on this supplement if he did this type of diet. I was thinking in my head, you may be off alcohol for all these years, but you are not optimized. You are not healthy. So, you know, for each person, it's different. So what I tell people is, no, you don't have to take supplements for the rest of your life if you don't want to. Uh, There's plenty of people that don't need to take any supplements. However, that being said, that's pretty rare these days. You know, our soil is so depleted in minerals. Uh, I forget the exact statistics, but I believe somewhere around a hundred years ago, if you had a can of spinach or a peach, for example, the amount of micronutrients in there was like a hundred to 150 fold greater Then nowadays, if you had that same can of spinach or that same peach, whatever fruit or vegetable, any root that grows out of the ground, our uh, modern industrial, uh, you know, agricultural systems and processes have completely just mega stripped our beautiful, wonderful, used to be very nutritious soil of all these different minerals. It's just People back in the day, and Julia Ross talks about this a lot. She says, if you look at people, if you look at pictures of big groups of people, I think she was saying back in like the 1950s, 1960s, even maybe even later than that, but you know, uh, groups of people, whether it's dozens or hundreds, she said there was no uh, overweight people or, or very little, there was no obese people. You know, if you look at the statistics, Mental health problems and addiction problems 100 years ago, 80 years ago, 50 years ago, they were so much lower than they are nowadays. Uh, one of the, some of the only things that have really changed, some of the main things is we have way less minerals in the soil. Uh, back then, people pretty much ate all whole foods. Now, a lot of the foods are processed, packaged, uh, preservatives, tons of stuff. So that's another thing. And I think in the 1950s, maybe 1956, 1957, uh, somewhere around there, that's when people started to make shoes where they're like plastic or rubber type bottoms. When prior to that, a lot of the shoes people were wearing, they were still getting lots of earthing benefits. So like now uh, we're completely separated. Our physical bodies are completely separated from the earth's electromagnetic field that's all around it. All this stuff is proven nowadays. It's not hocus pocus at all. There's so much research on this nowadays. It's crazy. So our foods depleted, uh, even the whole foods, if they're organic, they're way more depleted in micronutrients than they were a hundred years ago. Even if you're eating the best shit, our feet aren't touching the ground. Most people aren't getting near enough sunlight because we live indoors. A lot of us work indoors. A lot of the activities are indoors versus back in the day hunters and gatherers, and even way past that, people were outside a lot. Now the sun's not as powerful either because of all the pollution in the sky. It's blocking a lot of those sun benefits. So, I mean, and now with like internet stuff and smartphones, and there's just so many more things and they're coming out with more and more stuff. It's, you know, it's a lot of, it's really great, but there's a double-edged sword aspect to it 
all of this is taking us further and further away from our healthy kind of uh, default, most healthy way to live on the planet Earth. And they're trying to like scientifically engineer and genetically modify. And they think that they can just cure everyone's and treat everyone's health problems and, and problems in general with more and more technological advancements. Meanwhile, we're destroying the earth. Uh, we've never been more unhealthy and more addicted and more sick and more fearful and more depressed and more anxious and more angry and more, you know, just, and, and people are murdering people and we're still at war. Like shit is fucked up. So how long am I going to have to take supplements for? Or how long do you want to feel really good for man? That's what I usually say. Do you want to feel good forever? Make this an area of mastery for your personal self, get really passionate about it and then figure out, you know, the more things that you have that you know about that you can take to feel good. You don't got to take them all every day, but I mean, I, we're still learning about stuff, Chris. We're still learning about different natural therapies, supplements, foods, you know, powders, and so much more. And that's exciting because uh, the more unhealthy our civilizations and planet get, and the more messed up the healthcare system is, the more we need to take personal responsibility for our own health versus thinking that the way the American healthcare system and many other healthcare systems are, thinking that going to them for prevention is the best way to do it. Oh, the statistics are just in China, for example, they don't go to the doctor when they're sick. They go to the doctor for prevention. And, and as a result, hardly the, the diseases, mental and physical disorders and diseases in China are, are way, way, way less. Their lifespans way more. And I mean, that was a well, long except where, except where they have uh, serious pollution problems. And then in that case, it's right. evident. Uh, but yeah, that was a masterpiece of a monologue. So I'll do my best to follow it. Uh, I actually started reading a book called Evolutionary Herbalism, which is a big book, Ooh. and it's going to take me a while. It is not one of those books where I can kind of reflect on what I'm going to have for breakfast while I'm reading it at the same time, because then I'll have to read the sentence over again. I can't remember the name of the guy who wrote it. It's it's like Sajay Seja. Um, Sanjay, anyway. Sanjay Gupchak? No, no, he's not that famous but he's very articulate and he seems to be uh ha he has expertise in multiple fields uh science and also what i would have called hocus pocus before mm -hmm. but things like well chinese and other herbalism modalities uh astrology which is something that i'm still trying to wrap my mind around and i don't think it's uh necessary for optimization but it's interesting and you told me that mercury was in retrograde retrograde again and sure enough it took my computer like 10 or 15 minutes to start which is it's like my computer from 1995 so anyway maybe there's something to it and i feel like every book that i've read since quitting drinking and having that as my routine reading every night you know people always ask me why do you have so many books in your in your library? Do you actually read all those? And I said, yes, not because I'm more disciplined than you, but because I have an affliction whereby I have to read every night before I go to sleep if I want to actually fall asleep. And so anyway, I've read so many books since you know, in the last seven years. And this is just another one in that long, hopefully uh, multiple decades long series of me reading before going to bed and picking things up. And I know I'll take something from this book, but he was making very similar points as you talking about the confluence of human consciousness and earth consciousness. And, you know, of course, uh, the damage that we're doing to our bodies and our nutrition and also the planet at the same time. So it brings to mind for me, you know, some things that I was unaware of before, like regenerative farming, you know, it'd be nice to see systemic changes in pretty much every profession that exists right now, uh, but especially in, um, you know, things, just basic stuff like farming or, or PE for kids or nutrition for kids, the things that I could have learned in second grade, if they weren't feeding us fig Newtons and you know, yelling at us when we ran too fast on the field. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not to criticize everyone and, and anyone, obviously things evolve over time and we hope that they get better. We hope that human systems get better over time. 
But that's to your point about that. Anyone interested in what you were saying should check out uh, evolutionary herbalism and also learn a bit about herbalism as well, which is another topic that I thought was hocus pocus until you turned me on to Chinese herbs and Ayurvedic herbs. My functional medicine doctor this morning was saying that she's personally had great success with certain Ayurvedic herbs. She mentioned a certain formula uh, that she was using with some of her patients for uh, optimizing testosterone or maximizing testosterone levels without the use of TRT. So she's going to send that to me. I don't have it yet. She's going to send it to me, but it is an Ayurvedic formula. And she said that, you know, they, they're using this and then doing tests and they're finding that it helps. So mm-hmm. I don't know what that is yet, but, uh, and I don't know that I have, I don't think I have low testosterone, but I had brought up the idea of eventually, you know, if I'm 50 and I have a host of low T symptoms, uh, obviously I don't love the idea of injecting myself with something all the time and becoming dependent on that. But I also don't love the idea of being 50, 60, 70, and so on, and just kind of going off a cliff in terms of my well being and my strength and my bone density and my muscle mass. And so that's something that's kind of how that came up, but there are all of these modalities and tangentially related topics for alcohol recovery that I've read about. And some things that would seem to have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, TMS is one of those things. And now I think there is greater awareness of the relationship between the, the mechanism of TMS, uh, which you can talk more about, but basically, uh, Dr. John Sono and healing back pain came up with this theory that a lot of the pain that people feel is generated by the brain unnecessarily or in a sort of uh, indirect mechanism with which to patch over unresolved trauma. So you can, anyone who just heard that sentence can probably think of how that might pertain to addiction. And I think Sono himself said that TMS, that addiction is a TMS equivalent. In other words, there are all these things from, you know, back pain to ulcers, even uh, to addiction, to migraines, to whatever it may be, compulsive behaviors that could be uh, a manifestation related to TMS. And then of course, the way you and I see these things is that nothing is strictly biochemical in the same way that nothing is strictly psychological. When we're talking about human behavior or health, Everything has a biochemical and a psychological, and if it is a behavior that's displayed outwardly, a social and potentially a spiritual dimension. So these are multidimensional afflictions that we're dealing with. And the process of optimization is also a multidimensional process. And so that's why reading about all of these things can help. And actually, speaking of TMS, I know this is a winding monologue here in response to your pretty focused one, but uh, I was... I did deadlifts today in the gym for the first time since coming back from California. I also, I I did a bit of a different workout because I'm trying to integrate some cleans in there. I'm trying to do some explosive movements that can help with MMA, master some things I haven't mastered. I got really good at deadlifts after quitting drinking. And yet I never liked the idea of having my hands, my elbows up like that and resting the bar on my collarbone. Uh, So I'm, having a friend who used to do CrossFit a lot, helped me out with that. So then we got to my, you know, it was kind of like, you help me with the cleans. I'll help you with the deadlifts. And uh, when I did that in one of the sets, I felt something pop in my back. And for a second, for a second, I was like, Oh no, I hope you didn't just lose papaya there. Uh, But for a second, I was thinking, Oh no, this could be really bad. And there was a sharp pain and then I literally thought to myself, it's probably just TMS. Don't worry about it. You're, you're, you're coming back from vacation. You're hitting the ground running. You've got a lot in your mind. I didn't think about it. I haven't thought about it since. Um, and then I did think about it. Actually, that's not true. I thought about it in the car uh, driving to dinner afterwards. And I thought, what if I did hurt my back? And it's really bad. And then it started hurting again. <laughs> and then I thought, no, no, it's probably TMS. <laughs> so right now I can tell that there's a slight misalignment. And I'm going to the chiropractor tomorrow, but I don't think there's anything serious, but that, I mean, that kind of thing has happened so many times in the last several years. And if I hadn't read Dr. John Sarno's work, I wouldn't be aware of the TMS phenomenon. And I would be focusing all of my consciousness's energy on things that would be amplified and magnified and made worse. So that's just one small example of how filling yourself with knowledge, taking the opportunity after you transcend addiction of whatever 
to whether it's to drugs or alcohol or behaviors or whatever, you you get more time and you get more mental clarity and you get more energy. And if you can find a time each day, for me, it's right before bed because I like to read before bed. If you can find time to fill yourself with useful information, uh, then all of that information over time will help to repair you at least as well as the supplements will. And of course, I would not have come across the supplements, nor would you, if we hadn't had this habit of reading. Yep. Readers, readers, readers. And I learned it uh, from the guy that wrote the book on how to pick up girls. He did a bunch of personal development when he wanted to get better at picking up girls, dating, and eventually getting in a relationship. He just read, I remember one part of this book, the game, the secret society or the the Secret Society of Pickup Artists by Neil Strauss. Such a funny book. He's a great writer. Um, I didn't use or care about any of the dating tactics at all in there. Matter of fact, I was kind of, at that point at least, kind of appalled by him. Kind of, I was a month off of heroin, alcohol, benzos, and other drugs. Like look, Picking up girls was the last thing on my list. I was so uh, passionate about and interested by when he wanted to learn a new skill, he would sit there and he'd like, you know, just lock himself in his apartment or his bedroom for a few days or a week. And he would just read book after book after book, you know, how to get fit, how to be confident, how to use neurolinguistic programming, uh, how to use the Hawaiian Ho'opono Ono. I forget how to pronounce that. And so I was like, wow, you're telling me that I can improve myself in all these different ways, relationships my body, fitness, mindset, spirituality. I can just go read a bunch of books. I don't think that idea ever dawned on me. Uh, if it did, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, but then regarding the TMS, it's really funny because our medical system, at least here in America, it's all based on germ theory and like Newtonian physics to where humans are all physical. We're just physical. If you have a pain, if you have an ache somewhere, if you got a sore throat, then they look for one simple thing, maybe two things that are causing that physical problem. They're looking for physical things, whether it's a structural abnormality or a germ or a, a virus or a bacteria or whatever that are coming into your system, physical things affecting you physically. And so with pain, they'll cut you up with surgery or they'll adjust you or they'll massage you or they'll give you painkillers or other pills all these physical treatments. The only problem with that is we're physical. We have a physical body. We have an astral energy body. This stuff is so proven by nowadays too. There are thousands and thousands of books on the human energy system, the meridians, the acupressure points, the shot, the seven chakras. I mean, this stuff is so well documented. There's so much research on this stuff. There's so many experts. I've been watching documentaries the past maybe six months. People that are neurosurgeons, double PhD physicists, uh, quantum physicists, you know, people that are just have the most impressive <clears throat> educational background and career of body of work. And these people are saying, you know, we not only are we not just physical, but we're only 0.1% physical. We're mostly energy. We're mostly energy. What is that? We can change our energy with, yeah, with foods, with the certain foods and water, but also by certain movements, by the way we think. A big thing you were saying is the beliefs. I think that's one of my biggest takeaways from Sarno's work too. Whether it comes from repressed, unpleasant emotions, emotional trauma, you know, there's probably a lot to do with that, but so much of it is our belief. And he would teach people back then. There's nothing wrong. He would do tests first to make sure they didn't have a tumor, you know, and make sure there was nothing malignant that was going to be really hazardous. And if they didn't have anything like that going on, some ruptured discs, maybe a slight, a, a five-year-old tiny little rotator cuff tear, even when people had, you know, substantial uh, problems, he would say, if, it, if your pain persists more than three months, it's not coming from physical stuff usually. So he would just tell them, he'd give them the knowledge and tell them 
there's nothing wrong with your back or there's nothing wrong with your shoulder or you don't need to hyper focus, you know, with hyper vigilance on your, your posture and, you know, what, what kind of chair you're sitting in and all this stuff. So he would help people believe that uh, in basically in uh, your own body's healing miracle, we're not these little fragile things. And so nowadays, I guess, and I might just be kind of naive. I might just be wrong about a bunch of stuff, but I legitimately believe that although I used to have anxiety disorders, uh, intermittent depressive disorders, bipolar two disorder, uh, and a bunch of other things, chronic pain at one point for three years. Nowadays, I believe that not only, you know, are those things done with, but I believe that I'm immune to all of those. So maybe I'm not right, but my belief is in conviction is so strong that those things could never affect me. You know, our beliefs create uh, our reality. And there's, there's people out there that do the most amazing things, telekinesis, uh, people doing remote viewing programs that they used to do in the CIA to spy on Russia and Ro Russia was spying on us. There's so many studies on this. If people look, it sounds a bunch of it like people can't do that. All you have to do is do a little bit of reading. There's so much evidence. It's ridiculous. So my point with all this, then we should probably get uh, close to ending right here is the untapped human potential is just, it's ridiculous. Our, our untapped potential. Is so there's so much to work with there. And we have developed so fast technologically yet our spirituality and our consciousness uh, optimization has fallen behind. That's why we're, you know, just still having all these issues. Science is making breakthroughs. Technology is making breakthroughs. Consciousness in America, there's not that, it's not mainstream at all versus in like countries like in India, man, they were mastering consciousness 6,000 years ago. The stuff that they came up with in those Vedic texts, is life-changing when people look into it. And I find that now that I'm have learned so much about psychology and biochemistry and, you know, physical health, psychological health relationships, I spent, you know, the first eight, nine years after addiction, really, you know, getting proficient and all that. Now I'm like, oh man, consciousness is never ending experimentation, never ending learning. Uh, one guy, Dr. Stephen Greer, who's like a genius. I've been looking at so much of his stuff. He, his belief is that for the next thousand years, that's going to be the main study uh, in human civilization is consciousness. Yeah. Well, I would also add, I'm, I'm not uh, Elon Musk or some kind of uh, AI genius, but I, <laughs> I have a hunch that the, high level technologists are going to find it much harder to create an identical AI silicone based or non-human inorganic, whatever consciousness uh, th that is identical to human consciousness, or at least uh, commensurate with it. I think it's going to be very difficult to do, but that was a very interesting and wide ranging discussion. <laughs> I think that's a great place to leave it. I think pe some people are going to really enjoy this and others are going to have weird dreams tonight. So we will see. <laughs> I uh, hope thanks. so. Thanks, Matt. We'll we'll be uh, with everyone in another episode soon.